everyone, it's Katie Crysdale here from Lakeview Aquatic Consultants. Welcome back to the Aquatic Industry Insider. So in today's video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to be talking about a topic in the news this week. I actually want to talk about our new newsletter, Pool Aid, which launched a few months ago, and talk about what I do in that newsletter every week and how it's different from other social media that you might be following in the Lakeview Aquatic Consultants ecosystem. If you've been following me or Lakeview Aquatic Consultants for a while now, we did have a traditional monthly newsletter back in the beginning. That newsletter was hosted through MailerLite and it was sent out once a month. It usually had more of an op-ed at the beginning and then a link to the upcoming certified pool operator class, a couple of photos, a couple of articles. I wasn't particularly thrilled to write it and so I wasn't particularly thrilled to send it. And I think that reflected in our open rate and I'm not sure that we were really providing our clients, customers, friends with any sort of value. So I tried relaunching that newsletter in fall 2022 and it really just got pushed off my plate. I never wanted to write it. So I just let it die on the vine, even though we had almost 900 subscribers at that point. Fast forward to fall of 2023 and Bill C-18 here in Canada has had a huge impact on the way that we reshare news articles and media on the Lakeview Aquatic Consultants Facebook page. So if you don't live in Canada, and I apologize if you do live in Canada, we're beating this horse to death, but it really has caused so many creators, so many businesses to pivot. But essentially, you cannot reshare a news article from any media source, whether that's the New York Times, whether that's Chatelaine Magazine, National Geographic, you cannot link to that content on Facebook in Canada. It will be blocked. It will not even let you post. It has been a huge change in the social media landscape here in Canada. For me, as a regular person who uses social media, who used to read articles that were reshared by my friends and colleagues, and then also as a business owner. So in the olden days on Facebook, I would be able to post off the cuff mentions of a drowning incident, new equipment, pool shutdown, a political issue, anything that was related to the aquatic and swimming pool industry, I would post on our Facebook page. And it was my own personal scrapbook that I could link back to specific topics, whether it is breastfeeding in pools, lifeguard uniforms, the quote, gray watch, the older generation that's now moving back to pools. As of September 2023, Facebook Meta put a stranglehold on that and it got increasingly worse up until we literally can't post any article. Starting in fall 2023, I started to get back into YouTube a little bit. I was recording some of the early aquatic industry insider videos. I've started to figure out what I want to talk about in these videos, news articles that are interconnected or topics that are more widespread in our industry, a news article that may be indicative of a bigger issue, a bigger trend, something that you need to be aware of as an aquatic or recreation or pool professional. That has been the focus of YouTube, is diving deeper into those topics using news articles, using interviews with different people in our industry, talking about different products. And I think if you followed our YouTube channel for any length of time, you've seen that they do take quite a bit of time to record, to edit, and then the actual content itself is often over an hour. And so not everybody has the time to dedicate to that. I also understand that YouTube usage is very generational. And so for me as a millennial, it's nothing to put on a YouTube video in the background of my administrative work and to listen to an interview or a vlog of somebody I like to follow, but not all ages have the same behavior. And so that's kind of what brings us to Pool Aid, the relaunch of our newsletter. Pool Aid has been written and published since March of 2024. I know myself well enough that I need to work on something and make sure I'm happy with it before I hard launch it. And so I have been posting that newsletter every week for most of the last six months. And I'm really happy with the evolution into what kind of content it includes, and what you can expect if you decide to subscribe. 
So Pool Aid is a name that you might be familiar with. It was also a series of webinars that I hosted that went viral in 2020 in the early days of the pandemic. So on our YouTube channel, we have two playlists for all of those webinar recordings, which are available for free. I've had that Pool Aid name for a long period of time and haven't really done anything with it. I've thought I've thought about bringing back virtual learning. I've thought about hosting in-person learning. And where I'm at right now is it made sense to use it for our weekly newsletter. When I started the weekly newsletter, I knew that I wanted to be able to cover news stories that I could no longer grow up on Facebook. And I knew that I also wanted to be able to provide some more context for those people who are interested but don't have 45 minutes to be able to watch one of my videos. So if you subscribe to the Pool Aid newsletter, what you can expect is that every week I send out a newsletter, usually towards the end of the week, some weeks it's Friday, some weeks it's Saturday, the time does fluctuate a little bit because I'm human, my schedule is different week over week. But essentially I try and roll together different news articles that I've been tracking through the week and I share a little bit of context they may not in and of themselves be trends. They may be one-off stories, but I curate them together in terms of how these stories are interconnected year over year. So one story I mentioned in last week's edition that I will link in the description box below was connecting a current case in New Zealand where a high school student had incorrectly assessed their swimming competency on an excursion form. So the school was going on an outdoor adventure excursion and students were asked to describe their level of swimming competency. And this teenage student described themselves as a non-swimmer, I can float, but then updated their form and said, I can swim. And then this group went out on an excursion and the, the participants went out into the surf and this teenager ended up dying. They experienced a fatal drowning on one of the coastlines in New Zealand. I shared that news article because I think there's a lot we can take away about these types of excursions, the practicality or not, as the case may be, of having people self-assess their swimming competency. And then I connected it back to a very famous case in Ontario a number of years ago where a teacher was charged for the death of a high school student who also died on an excursion that involved swimming. We also in that particular edition of the newsletter, I talked about adult swimming lessons in a op-ed of a black woman talking about how she learned how to swim as a parent later in life for her children to be able to experience swimming activities with them. I talked about a boating related drowning fatality associated with a Viking excursion reconstruction. So this was a historic um, sailing to re enact a Viking journey. And this resulted in one of the participants dying, either drowning, uh, maybe there were no life jackets, Mary, maybe she experienced cold water shock. The details are not clear yet. And then I reshared some interesting videos. These emails are usually 750 to 1000 words. They have different news links and articles. So I'm trying to keep them manageable, less than five, 10 minutes of your time, but chock full of resources, things that I'm reading, things that I'm interested in. There is no forecast week over week, month over month about the topics we're gonna cover. So all of this is a long way to say that if you follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, it is still different content in our new Pool Aid newsletter. So if you follow us on Facebook, it's not gonna be just a duplication of what you see there. Same with Instagram, same with YouTube. Facebook, I do still try and post some articles if I can, if they are on a completely safe website, like .org, .gov, on a private website. If somebody republishes an article, I can usually share it that way. If it is a social media campaign about water safety and drowning prevention, I'll post that on Facebook. If it's a special event, a conference, a facility I'm visiting, all of that will go on Facebook. Instagram is still a grand tour of pools, the things that I'm visiting in terms of facilities, a little bit more travel recently, and then also different equipment or ideas that I see in terms of pool operations. YouTube will continue to be these longer discussions about a topic or an interview with an aquatic professional. And the Pool Aid newsletter is compliant to Canadian privacy legislation, so you can unsubscribe at any point. 
We don't sell you things. We don't have sponsors. It's not spam. I know having space in your inbox is extremely precious and I don't take that for granted. So if you are interested in getting more content about the pool industry and what's happening, whether you are a lifeguard, a pool operator, a pool supervisor, the newsletter is suitable for all types of aquatic professionals. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe to the newsletter. I'll link to it below and I'll catch you in the next video.